Okay, everyone, welcome to the stream. Uh, today I'm going to be doing something uh, totally different from the last two times because I don't actually want you to learn anything or myself to learn anything. So today we're going to just really crank it up by trying to write a data server in Node.js. Uh, I have written data servers before, but not in Node.js. And even though it has a .js at the end of it, Node.js is not really the same thing as um, as a regular JavaScript. So, so there is uh, that is sort of interesting. Uh, that is, I, I, I you know I don't know why I said that. Um, so that is going to be sort of a challenge here. Um, okay, so the first thing we're going to try doing here is we probably need a file we're going to data serve from. In reality, it's the type of data I'm going to be serving when this goes into production is going to be map data with latitude and longitude grids. And we are going to address that because it turns out there's other issues uh, when you're doing latitude and longitude grids, which has nothing to do with, uh, which is way more complicated than simply, uh, than simply looking at a file. But we're going to build up to that. So I have a lot of boring files, but I don't know how many of them are suitable for replit. Probably lots of them. So I'm just going to upload user dict words, which is a uh, just the Unix standard dictionary. It is, um, I'm trying to figure out how big it is. Uh, it is about five megabytes. Now the real files we're gonna be looking at uh, when I go into production on this, they're not gonna be on Replit, they can't fit on Replit, are gonna be several gigabytes in size, up to 200 gigabytes in size. So one thing we're not gonna do is try to read the file entirely into uh, Node.js. We could do it with these smaller files, but we really can't do it uh, once we go into production. We're going to be using file seeking and so forth. And uh, another thing we're going to be running into is that um, j just like regular JavaScript, Node JavaScript, Node.js is asynchronous. Uh, that means uh, we will not have the same... A lot of the things that we would find uh, to be sort of nice we won't actually we won't actually have. Uh, we can't, for example, create a function that returns a stream of bytes from a file, because when JavaScript wants to read a file, it's actually going to return a promise, and then and then not return the actual contents. But we can, unless we use an async function, I'm going to try to avoid that because I think uh, the spirit of JavaScript is your program should continue doing other things. Uh, until it receives the data it wants. So uh, just stopping the program intentionally to wait for stuff, not a great idea. Okay, so let's go ahead and upload the uh, user dict words if it'll let me, hopefully. And it happens to be called Linux words. Actually, I'm going to rename it because I think that's a that's going to be a problematic name. I'm going to rename it to um, words.txt. It's a nice, simple name for it there. Okay, so let's go ahead and upload that. Okay, and I'm gonna check on it. But it's it's really big, so it, this is gonna yep, this is gonna kind of hang, and probably about ready to look at it. But you know, what the heck? Okay, and as always, we're gonna make lots of mistakes. Some because I don't know what the hell I'm doing, and some because it's instructive, and I probably won't tell you which is which. So there. Okay, so this is the Unix dictionary file. It's very long, and it's very it has uses, uh, but it's not doesn't have every word in the world for reasons that are too deep to go into. Okay, so I think the first thing we want to do is just see if we can even open this file because, you know, that is sort of, let's see, sort of the first step of anything. Um, and then, and we're going to get, I think, a promise out of this, but let's find out. File is not defined, so this is just awesome. We start right off with... Uh, with uh, this not working, I think we actually do need to require FS or something. Um, but let's Google. I really need to stop doing this. At some point, this is going to do something really ugly that I don't want. Let me see if I can turn it off. Show a blank page. Yay. So now you can't see all the secret stuff I don't do because this is a profile created specifically for sharing. Okay, so open file in node. That should be pretty simple. FS read file. So FS is actually what I'm going to need to um, I'm going to need to include it and I'm hoping they just sort of include it by default and this is how you normally would do it. Um, 
Now, the constant f. In theory, we could give this a different name other than fs. We don't have to name it the same as the as the the name of the library that we're going to use in order to read files. Um, however, this is convention to do it this way. There's no reason not to do it this way. Let's see what fs actually is. I, I don't know the answer to this. I'm curious. Uh, it's a it's going to be a library, but let's see what it actually spits out. Wow. Yeah, we know file is not defined because I haven't really done anything with it yet. Okay, um, and we can't really use read file because we're going to be using uh, seeks. Uh, no, not the religious group, although they are a wonderful religious group. Uh, Seek, which is we're going to look around in the file using random access, which is one of the uh, one of the big gains in in file systems today. Back in there was a time when you could only read files sequentially. So anyway, this is actually pretty nice. It's I keep doing that. This is actually pretty nice. It gives us a list of the functions that you can uh, that that it has, and so I think one of them is going to be open sync is the function we won't use. That will actually do give synchronous reading, uh, and that is sort of the anti-JavaScript way of doing it. So we're going to do a, a non-synchronous open uh, of this, which means uh, which means that basically when we try to read from the file, we will have to it'll return control to the program immediately. And we'll have to do a then to get to get what we want. So now, let's go ahead and not log this anymore. Let's now we just say fs open because that's how we did it. And then let's see what what fs turns out to be, which it won't be a file handle. In most streams, most streams no. In most programming languages, file open returns a file handle. Here we're going to probably get a promise. Oh, apparently we have to go deeper than this. Um, so I'm looking, uh, you can see what I'm looking at. So we apparently need to give it a function to call once it's done opening the file, which is a callback. So this could, in theory, return a promise and we could do it then, but apparently they've decided uh, that they want to just include the function right here, and this is very nice here. It says it's a callback function. So we're going to just call it f1, and again, most JavaScripters would just inline this function. We're learning, and I don't like most JavaScripters or JavaScript, so I'm going to go ahead and do it my way. I'm a little bit curious about something. I think this is not going to work because the function you give to the uh, to the fs open second argument probably has to take a specific number of arguments, and f1 is going to take no arguments and say, I have been called. So this will not work, or maybe it will, because, you know, I don't really know what the hell I'm doing. All right. Oh, wow. So that's pretty damn awesome. Um, it calls F1, and even though it has no... Um, that's interesting. And even though it has no arguments, it will call F1. So that, let me do that again. I was just so excited by it. Awesome. Of course, that's not very useful to us, because... We're, we're actually want to get something out of this. So what happens if we take it with one arg? And I think it's going to need two arguments because it is a console log arg1. And then I've called it, which is in the wrong order. Null. OK. Not great. Let's see what happens if we give it uh, three arguments. And presumably, we can give it any number of arguments and um, and we there's actually a way to give it arbitrary number of arguments, but that's not really necessary here. So we do this and undefined. So null undefined. This is just sort of the brilliance of of consistency. And this might be something useful. Undefined. It's actually possible this open failed, even though it looks like words.txt is here. REPL does things in a sort of unusual way. So I'm going to have to go back here and actually look to see how the uh, callback uh, open function. Um, use fs access to check for access. B yeah, we might actually end up doing that, but we're going to not. Um, oh, I'm sorry. The second parameter to fs open apparently has to be uh, how we're going to open it, whether it's for read, write, or whatever. Um, and then we give a function that takes two arguments, as you can see right right here. So let's let's go fix that. Um, and I only need to read this file, so I don't really, I don't really need to rewrite to it or anything. Now let's see what happens. Um, 
I don't know where that first undefined is coming from. Oh, undefined might just be the return value because we're not doing any evaluation. So now let's see what this thing gets. Okay, no, this is not very exciting. And I'm hoping two will be the error parameter. 21. Blackjack. Actually, I think that's the file handle. But let's go ahead and check over here. And it is. You can see that the first argument is the error, and the second argument is the file descriptor, which hopefully we can do things with. But, you know, maybe not. Who knows? Okay, so why don't we go ahead and give these things more proper names, like error and fd. And I'm going to use the interpolation thing with Bobby to actually print out that what it's been called with. Um, of course, I never remember the interpolation, Bobby, but maybe this is it. And if it's not, we'll fix it. Um, so this is basically, the function's going to echo what it's been given, because it's cool. Accepting the comma in there. I don't need one, because I'm just printing, but I want one. Okay. So cool, now we have the file descriptor. I'm going to actually log the file descriptor, because I don't, it is not, it looks like an integer, maybe it is an integer, but I don't think it is exactly really an integer. Um, okay, maybe it is. Okay. Um, so I'm, of course, back here. Read not recommended. Well, let's go back up here to read, because that's what we're doing. Um, so now that we have the file descriptor, which may just be a number, which probably is a weird thing, because we might be able to use other numbers in there and really F with it. But let's see what this is. Okay, we're not going to use read file sync. Um, all right, constant FS. Open sync. Well, this is fun. If anyone's in chat, which no one is, by the way, um, you could help me out here. Or we can probably figure this out on our own, because file descriptor is, let's just see how we read from a file. And we're not going to do what they're doing, because we actually need to seek around in the file. But let's, let's take a look. Um... So read not recommend read recommended. Uh, console error, throw error. Read my data. Great. So now we need to know, and I, I don't think that's a JavaScript built in. Um, function read my data. Cool. So that is just awesome that they're not defining this function. Um, right, let's let's get this to be uglier for a reason. Um, and we're going to use, I'm going to bring in my library that is public, you can get to it, no problem. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, var dump the file descriptor. I don't, despite what we just did, I still don't think it's really an integer. I think it has more magical properties. So I'm going to create a subdirectory called lib, and then I'm going to upload two files. One of them is my actual library, and the other one is called a staging library, but it's got all my stuff in it. It's got good stuff in it, so we actually need it too. In fact, it probably has more stuff in it than bclib because I am just really bad at uh, at consistency. So I'm going to move this into lib, this into lib, and of course, uh, actually we may not be able to do that uh, because this is not this is server side JavaScript, not client side. Let's see what happens. I don't think it's written quite well enough to actually work. Let's see what happens. Well, that's very clever. It's trying to install bclib.js, uh, which is difficult because this is... Um, I think I might be able to get away with this, but even this probably won't work. Um, the bclib is actually meant to be a client-side library. However, cannot find module. Oh, well, actually, yeah, third time. Uh, it's in, I, but 
The problem is that I'm pretty sure this isn't going to work anyway. So, let's see what happens. Yeah, I cannot find lib bc lib js. So we cannot do what I was hoping we could do. I'm going to keep these files around because some of the subroutines they have in them are actually quite useful. Um, there is a way to include JavaScript files and other JavaScript files on the server side. I do not remember what that way is exactly. You can basically do something like this, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. So I'm going to copy the var dump function that I've created because that one actually is sort of useful. And I'm not going to copy the um, the comment because space is going to be tight until I figure out how to use multiple job, uh, multiple files. So now let's var dump fd and see what we can do with it. And it might just really be an integer. Let's find out. Uh, yeah, I'm missing a parentheses. Good deal. Sometimes I wish these things f1. Okay, that's bizarre. Console log var dump. So maybe it's not an object. Maybe it really just is a very simple integer. Okay. So let's go back here real briefly. Descriptor. Uh, okay, that's fs truncate. <sighs> Truncate sync, write file, which we don't want. Uh, open. Now oh, it is an integer that's returned from open. We might not need open, it turns out. It might be nice people go directly to, to read. Append file. Well, I guess we're going to have to do fs read. To, mm. I really don't want to do fs read file because we are going to need to seek in this file and that is very different from reading. Um, but we're experimenting. So let's go ahead and do this. And I'm just tired of variable names. So I'm just going to give them sort of f1, f2, f3. Uh, not great, but you know. Read file. This is good. We got a little bit of completion going on. String. <laughs> Path string number buffer URL. It must use the file protocol. Oh, if a URL, okay. File descriptor is provided, the underlying file will not be closed automatically. Asynchronously reads the entire contents of a file. We'll go ahead and do this just to make sure everything is sort of hunky dory. But it is not going to be. Since we need to seek in this file, we're not going to be able to use this protocol. So let's see what we do here. Um. Okay, it, it apparently does not like the fact that I'm doing this without a callback function. So we'll just use f1, which is our favorite callback function. Uh, yeah, apparently... And apparently, the callback function takes two arguments, which ours does, an error and a data buffer. So calling it fd is probably not the best, but let's see what happens. No such file. Yes, because I can't spell. Let's try that again. Oh, wow. That's that's not what I wanted. That is not at all what I wanted. And in fact, that should not have happened because I wanted an asynchronous read. This also makes me think maybe I should have started with a smaller file. Um... Jesus Christ. And, in fact, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and create a smaller file. I'm going to cheat and make it in Unix. I'm going to basically randomly sort uh, user dict words and take the first 500 lines and call it words2.txt because I just am just amazing with names like that. All right. Created. Let's go ahead and upload it. And... I was I was using words.txt initially because I was hoping to use a much um and stop this. Uh to because we are gonna need to be looking at larger files, but perhaps 
I've, I have sort of undone this too soon. So, assuming we can get rid of the screen freeze, yay, let's reload. Uh-oh. Apparently this is going to go all the way through, all the entire list, before it lets me stop. This is not what I wanted. But, you know, in life, there are so many things you don't want. Um, but let's see. It. Now, by the way, I'm, last time I streamed to the wrong channel, I do want to apologize for that. Uh, this time I am checking that I am streaming to the right channel. Not that anyone's watching or listening, by the way, just just FYI. Uh, leave page. Um, and I am streaming to the right channel. Okay, fantastic. So now we're going to be uploading words to... And we're going to do this. And we are not logging var dump fd. Let's see what this does. I have no idea why it's updating package configure. Okay, good. So that printed out the whole file, not what we wanted, but we are. I actually don't know how the hell, why the hell it did that. I'm actually somewhat unhappy about that. Um. So apparently, the second argument is a buffer. Am I doing this wrong? Um, okay. A apparently I've used the non-wanted file of, of read file because the bad w way of doing this. Um, because I did not want a synchronous file read. Okay, that's what I absolutely did not want. Um, hmm. And they did have an example of wrong and right. Um, so let's look for the word wrong. Or was it bad? Great. You can never actually find anything when you want it. So read. They, I do. They did have something here where they told me why I sucked, uh, but it might have been actually. I think it was here. Here it is. Not recommended is the magic word they used. So let's look for read. Not recommended. Um, recommended. If error. Um, so apparently the difference between the two is, is minimal. Um, oh, I see. So read, this is actually still part of the, the read my data is still part of this function, the callback function. So apparently that's, that's how you do that. Well, that was not very interesting though. Now I'm going to try look doing file seeking in words too, and let's just do file seeking in node. I'm, I, it better have this feature because fuck. And also, uh, I need to fix this browser to open search results in new window someday. And this time I am okay with clobbering this window. Um, it's included in the read function. Uh, does seek exist? Blah, 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 blah. Ooh. Um, so apparently, you can... That works as the seek position. This is... Okay. So apparently, let's we can just use read to do this. There's going to be a problem here. And the problem here is going to be that this might open the file each time I want to read, which is absolutely hideous. So fs read. Oh, come on. Give me the little completion thingy. Seriously? Let me see if it even works with... Okay, apparently I've defeated its little conversion thingy. And I don't know what the um, 
what the parameters are. I'm pretty sure it's going to be file blocking and non-blocking. This is good, good stuff here. Um, so read file. This appears to be a. Huh. Apparently, it's it really is non-blocking. It's just that the data is coming in so fast. It appears to be like it just comes in right away. Um, but that doesn't actually help me with fs read. That's fs read file, which is different. Um, so node fs read. Maybe I'll do that, and it'll help. Um, so this is the documentation. Should actually should document stuff. Not this. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy this little thingy here. Obviously, we can't use it as is. Did I once again wipe out my REPL? Yep, I'm awesome. Okay, um, while well, this reloads, uh, so we're going to put it here after the var dump function. Um, so it's going to read a file descriptor, which means that's actually a good thing. We don't necessarily want, um, we don't really want to reopen the file every time. So now, we can probably get rid of this, this, we probably are going to need function f1, maybe. Okay, read position, this is pretty nice. So, fs open, oh come on. Um, if I remember correctly, it takes a callback and the second argument of the callback is the file descriptor. But I'm going to double check. So fs open. Let's actually see if we can look at the signature there. Path flags. Nope, that's open sync. Don't want that. Path flags mode callback. And apparently, I don't know how this works, but apparently you could, in theory, to not have the second argument, we're going to put it in anyway. So let's go ahead and get back here and do that. That's the file. We want it read-only. And we're going to make f1 our wonderful callback function because we, we just really like it. And then we can't do this yet because uh, the f1 is going to be the thing that gets called. And f1 will be able to do that. So now we can see if we're getting anywhere. I don't know why it's doing that. I'd like to th thank... Uh, Electric Long Board for joining me. You are my only user right now. Feel free to put something in the chat if you want to join me on Voice or on Replit. Just let me know and I can I can arrange that. The Replit I just need to make it uh, read right. Uh, for uh, the Voice we can go onto Discord. Um, but again, if you want that, that's great. If you want to chat, if you want to just remain silent, that's all. It's all good. Okay, so now we have null and 24. So 24 is our f our file descriptor. And so from here, um, because we know that FD is defined here, we can actually do, now we can do the thing we were trying to do earlier. Um, and this file read comment actually looks very much like the, the, the comments on other, the file read functions on other, uh, so FD, which is going to be RFD, buffer, okay, this is actually very, Buffer might be where it's going to... Actually, I don't know what buffer is, because maybe that's buffer size, but let's find out. Um, 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 um. Because it's not going to actually give us data, it's going to call a function which gets the data a little bit at a time. So let's see. Uh, buffer typed array or data view. Buffer is the buffer that the data will be written to. Offset is the offset in the buffer... That's interesting. Um, length is an integer. Position is an argument for where to begin. Um, okay, well, that doesn't seem too hard. Uh, except for I have no idea what a buffer is and why I would want to write to one. But apparently we, we need one. So let's go ahead and declare a buffer. We'll call it B. We want to write right at the beginning of the buffer, I think. I don't see why that would we wouldn't want to do that. We're going to read, let's say, 30 bytes, and we're going to read it from 
The only problem is we need to not read it from the, after the end of the file, but I think the file is at least 5,000 bytes. And the callback function will be called uh, F1003, because it's 1003 in the morning here, just so you know. Okay. Now, of course, we need F1003 to exist. And once again, let's see how bad how bad would we can do this. F1003 has been called. So let's rock and roll, see if this all works. Buffer B, unexpected identifier. Um, <laughs> do I, let's see. Buffer typed array or data view. That's fun. Well, let's make it a regular array and hope that uh, this is getting kind of wonky, but let's go ahead and make this just a regular regular old array and see if it, it lets me do that. The buffer argument must be one of type buffer, typed array, or data view. Well, that's put me in my place. Um, Why can't it just be a string or something? Well, you know what? This is not going to work. Yeah. Um, all right, so we need to take a look at the buffer class real quick. Uh, or do we need to look at the typed array or a data view? Oh, God. Let's just look at buffer. Um, buffer from array. Well, that should be easy enough. I, I might need to load the buffer function. And we're going to create it from the empty array because I really have no idea what the hell I'm doing. Buffer from array is not a function. Um, well, let's take a look at it. Okay, so apparently the, the issue here is I need to include buffer. Uh, require buffer. And we will reference it. I don't even know if we need to reference it because, oh, yeah, we do. Um, this should do what we want because we're now going to refer to the uh, variable buffer is going to be the the, the the top thing in the library. So, uh, unexp oh, yeah, this isn't shouldn't be a comma. Okay, so let's see what this does. Buffer from array is not a function. Well. Let's do this. It, we might have, we may not have the buffer array. We might actually need to rebuild it from NPM or something. Uh, but let's make it lowercase. I don't, that should do absolutely nothing. But I've got time. So run this. Yeah, okay. So now, why don't we just do a little spit out here of buffer, and it might not actually exist, which means we need to do an npm build. Whoa, that was kind of cute. So the buffer is a function. Oh, here are the functions it has. Uh, from, um, from, so maybe it's just from, not from array, because it does not look like there is a uh, from array function. Let's see what this does. Buffer from is not a function. Well, it clearly is a function because you say right here, function from. Um, is encoding, byte length, slow buffer transcode. Well, you're lying to us now. Unless, of course, from has a different, uh, um, different signature than I'm looking at. Ah, <sighs> fudge. So I wonder if there's a better way to seek than, well, there really won't be. I'm going to go ahead and look. The word seek doesn't even appear here. This is actually buffer, so actually I should be a little bit nicer to this. and Go back to file system documentation, which also doesn't have seek, but that's awesome. Really, just, you know, the uh, because your file system should not really have a seek function. Um, 
Uh, use buffer alloc? Wait a minute. This is some strange stuff here. Let's try it. But I'm getting progressively unhappier. Oh, I actually think I will be a little bit nicer and actually call it B. <laughs> Value is length. Oh, okay. Wait. Oh. What? Okay, so the buffer has to be large enough for the number of bytes I'm going to read. And since I might read a lot of bytes... Let's just be annoying and do this. I don't know if that'll work. That might actually be mod or something. I don't know if this is going to work either. Awesome. Okay. So now let's clean up a little bit of crap here. I don't know if we need to require buffer because apparently we can use it without requiring it. Um, let me comment that out. Buffer might just be a built-in thing. And we... Okay, let's see what this does. Okay, fantastic. So, and again, let's, you know, see if we can give it some arguments. This is JavaScript Node.js by introspection. By manual introspection. Let's see what this does. Yes, because I'm not using the uh, templating construct, which is a backtick. Okay, that's interesting. Um, that's a little strange, but okay. Uh, the arg one is null arg. 2 is 19, and I think arg3 is the actual 30 bytes of data that we want. Um, so I don't know if the f1 is going to be like the error, f2 is going to be... Actually, I don't know what the hell that f2 is going to be. I don't know how the um, the read function's callback works. But we can check it out, because we got it right here. And wrong window... And we want with parentheses. Okay, so this should hopefully explain what's going on. Um, the callback function takes an error, a bytes read, and a buffer. So, so this is what what it's going to get. So the the arg three is the buffer. Um, and so let's call these error. First argument is error. Second argument is br, and third is buff. I haven't used buff before, have I? Okay, good. Um, it worries me a little bit that the number of bytes read does not match the number of bytes I want to read, so that might be an issue. But let's do this and see what happens. Yeah, we read 19 bytes, apparently, even though we asked for 30. So that worries me slightly. Um... So let's see what happens if we try to read 300 bytes, starting at position 5,000. Okay, we're only getting 19 bytes. We're not getting the um, the whole thing. Uh, so I wonder how we, we deal with this. Now, interestingly, F103 does not get called again at any point. It gets called once. Um, and then it kind of, uh, sucks. All right, well, let's see what happens if we try to read only 10 bytes. See if we can un- so we can undo the masterfulness. Okay, so 10 works. And I'm beginning to think this might be- have- be a really bad idea. So let's try 25 bytes. If we get 19 here, I'm gonna pretend- I'm- yeah. I think this somehow is getting translated to 19, and 
Really, it was a bad idea on my part. Now let's do it. And I don't know why it's continuing here. It might just be that it feels it has to read the entire file. But anyway. Nope, still 19. Um... That's the file descriptor. Actually, that doesn't need to be... That's coming afterwards, anyway. So, file descriptor, put it into B. Then call the function F1003. So... Well, so the obvious question is what the heck is B equal to over here? And this is weird because this is asynchronous, so it, these things might not log in the order that we want. But let's find out. Okay, cool. So B is this beautiful buffer that has lots of stuff in it. But how... how big is it? Yeah, that was too much to hope for that buffers would have lengths. Okay. Let's do this again. This time we're going to, yeah. But this time we're going to var dump it. Var dump, by the way, comes from PHP. It's not really a, something I created, obviously, up, up there. Stop paying. Okay, have I made a huge mistake here? Yes, because it's a million bytes. That was not fun. Stop. Stop. Okay, good. Uh, let's just make that a thousand... For now, we're going to make it a thousand bytes. And let's see what that does. That was just plain weird. Let's do that again. Oh, apparently that's a function that Buffer has in it, but it shows it up at the end. Okay. So Buffer... Looks pretty solid. Okay, now this is interesting. No, it's not. This is interesting because it looks like it fills in the first 19 bytes, because 0 is the start there. But it doesn't fill in the 20th byte, so this sort of explains why this is getting... Um, this uh, function, F103, is only F103, is only getting the, the first 19 bytes. So the question is, what are we doing here that is maybe uh, incorrect? that is causing this uh, to happen, and at least it's happening consistently. Let's go back and read about FS read some more. Read data from the file is the buffer the data will be written to. Offset is length is an number of bytes. Position is where to specify. The callback is given three arguments, error. Uh, okay. So, if it is invoked as util promise applied version, turns a promise from an object, which would actually be more useful to us. Um, I don't know if 19 is a magic number here for some reason, but uh, well, let's try reading from a different part of the file. Let's try reading from byte 400. I don't think that's going to help any. And we're not going to, well, let's go ahead and do that anyway. Okay. Reading 25 bytes from byte 400 is going to also... Whoa, that worked. Um, let me check what size words 2.txt is. I'm going to feel really bad if it turns out that it's just exactly the wrong length for what I'm doing. Yeah, it turns out uh, words 2 is 5,019 bytes. So my attempt to read uh, bytes from starting at byte... Uh, starting at byte... 5,000 going 30 doesn't work because the file isn't long enough. And I feel stupid about that. Uh, so if you're keeping track of when I... Oh, hello, uh, Nyko Duster uh, and Electrica. Uh, so you are there to see my, my horrible failure. Okay, so apparently there's nothing wrong with... I'm going to go ahead and save this just to, just to have a copy of it. Um, all right. Okay, yes, we actually have uh, someone... <laughs> Thank you, Nyko Duster. We have someone in chat. Uh, and thank you for that very nice comment. Uh, and it was an interesting mistake. It was a bad mistake. 
Uh, it was a mistake, partly because I was originally going to use words.txt, which is a much, much bigger file. Um, and since now we're not going to be reading the whole file, I think I can return to using words.txt. Um, so now we should be able to do the 5030 thing. So it's sort of a combination of me using a smaller file for testing and then forgetting that I'm using. So let's see what this does. And I don't think we need to var dump anymore. The value of length is out of range. Oh, wait, what? Oh. Okay, let me read my little parameter. Um, I, Nico just I see your message. We're going to look at it in just a sec. Um, okay, buffer is B. Offs oh, no, sorry. Offset is 5,000. Length is 30. And... No, I'm sorry. The offset is in the buffer. We want to write just directly to the first byte in the buffer, so that's a zero. Um, the length, we want to read 30 bytes from starting at the 5,000th character. And let's see what that does. Okay, very nice. Um, if I can put a new line in here, it might even be nicer. I don't know if this will work. And I will answer... Uh, Nico Destro, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, that did work. So, no, uh, let's see, no, 30... Oh, <laughs> didn't want to put the new line there, though. I wanted to put it before the buff so we could just see the buff on a line by itself. So, gorgeous, that does look like about 30 characters. Okay, Barry, how long have you been coding for? I just got into it for the last month. I'm currently doing the self-taught route. Self -taught route. Well, that's fantastic. I actually have been coding since back in the early 80s. I remember Basic 2.0. I remember the VIC-20, the Commodore 64, and the Commodore 128. Um, obviously, languages have come a long way since since the early 80s. Um, what's different about JavaScript from even you know languages like Perl or J uh, not exactly Java, but usually languages, uh, programming languages, are procedural step by step. You do one thing, then you do the next thing, then you do the next thing. And that's actually inefficient because if it takes a long time to do one thing, you should allow the program to do other things at the same time. Especially now that we have parallel processors and interrupts and all this good stuff that mean you don't really have to wait for like a file to load. Um, so that is um, so that is the um, so that's the, and the big difference with JavaScript is that it actually does is asynchronous. Okay, so now we have been able to read, let's see, five, oh wait, oh, 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 oh. So now, if I, were, if I were to try to read more than 30 bytes, this would be a problem, uh, 1,000 bytes, this would be a problem because I've only allocated a buffer size of 1,000. Yes, very nice. And now I'm going to go back to allocating a buffer of the correct size, and now I should be able to pull 1,000 yeah, I don't know if that's exactly 1,001 bytes, but it kind of looks like it. Let's pretend it is. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to be able... So the next sort of function we're going to create uh, is going to be something that reads a number of bytes from an open file descriptor, uh, which I think actually we may not need because it is just uh, read... Yeah, actually we may not need that. Okay, so now is where we get into the latitude and longitude stuff. Now, words.txt, which I'm not going to open here, is... And here I'm going to put in a nice readme file because we are going to be... Uh, why did you get banned on Quora? Uh, it's actually not for the reason you think. It's not because I gave bad answers or anything. Um, I was trying to scrape down all of Quora's data, and I actually got quite far, uh, but I made the mistake of using my real account for that. Um, and then the second one, I don't actually remember why I got, got banned. I think they somehow recognized it was me again. Um, yes, thank you for reading my profile. I really appreciate it. Uh, people who read what's below, the, the, if, you're, if you're viewing in non-full screen mode, there's a whole bunch of crap about me below it, including an apology for messing up the last stream. Um, so let's go ahead and create a readme file here, because this is where, this is my interest in the whole thing, is I'm looking at latitude, and, you know, the data I'm looking at is latitude and longitude. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say words.text. I'm just going to write it down. Is and I'm going to copy and paste this. Is uh, blah 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 blah. Actually, I don't know if I can do that. Can I do that? No, because I have to go through XClipboard for that. I have a weird setup where I can't cut and paste from an X term directly. I have to go through XClipboard. Okay. And now I'm going to do some math. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to I'm going to let somebody else do some math. I mean. Okay, um, actually, yeah, let me actually do this. So 15, so let's say 3,000, okay. Um, I'm going to pretend it's a data file of 3,000 longitude values from minus 180 to 180. That's how longitude goes. Longitude 180 is equal to longitude minus 180. But when you do maps like this, um, usually you treat it as a grid. Of course, the Earth is not is a sphere. It's not a grid. It's not a it's not a flat surface, uh, unless you want to believe that. But usually we pretend it's a grid, and and we and we look at the data is sort of gridded form. There's there's bad stuff. There's bad reasons we shouldn't be doing that. But that's what people have done. That's all where all the data I have is in that format. And we're going to have 1,500 latitude values because lat there's 180 degrees of latitude total, 360 degrees of longitude total. So usually the latitude resolution is, is half the resolution of the longitude um, from minus 90 to 90. OK, and again, I'm just writing this stuff down. Not very interesting. Um, so 3,000 by 1,500, um, and that is uh, 450,000. Uh, 4.5 million bytes. This is 4.9. So we, we, it's going to be, we're going to not use the last few digits, obviously. Um, so now we, we actually have to do a little bit of fun stuff here, which is we have to determine what each byte, okay, I'm going to assume here that each byte represents a point of data with some of the larger data sets uh, that are more complicated. You need more than one byte to represent data. Uh, but uh, if you have fewer than 255 total values, or fewer than or equal to 255 values, um, you only need one byte to represent it. So a lot of my grid files are very large files, but the one byte of data it represents uh, the, the value at that latitude and longitude. So now you would think, because there's 180 degrees of, uh, let's see what I'm doing, 360 uh, longitude values, Uh, you would think, you would think that I would know how to do the math, but clearly not. No, uh, you would think that um, so each, um, and actually this is there's going to be a worse part of this here in just a second. Uh, each each byte represents 360 over 3,000 in longitude, or 0 0.12. And we could do the same calculation for latitude. It's going to be the same because I have half the number of values and half the, uh, the total latitude, which is 180 degrees. Um, so our resolution here is going to be 0 0.12 degrees per byte. Uh, and it's going to get fun from here on. Um, OK, so now what we need to do is we need to be able to translate a latitude and longitude uh, to a byte. And actually, we're, we're, we're going to be able to do that, but we actually want to be a little bit more efficient. We're going we're gonna to expect that they're going to give us a square. For example, they're going to say, let's just give this example, give us data from 30 north to 40 north and from minus 120, which is west, but we, but anyway, um, to minus 105 west. So you'll notice that the, the, the uh, data does not necessarily line up to the grid, and they could be requesting 10 degrees of latitude data and uh, 15 degrees of longitude data. And uh, at some point, because I want to use caching and buffering and all that good stuff, uh, and, and I want to be able to write some of this data to the files, 
we won't allow arbitrary square queries. We will actually require them to have their queries aligned to something. But we should be able to handle queries like this um, even if we you know, don't want to. I mean, we should have the, the capability. So um, 30 degrees north latitude, let me see if I've done this correctly. Um, so first of all, we have to ask the, okay, so right, 30 degrees north latitude. Um, now keep in mind, files are not squares. They are just a series of bytes. We're going to have to adjust for that in just a sec. We're going to have to basically create a formula for where we're going to be putting stuff. Um, and I don't know if I want to do that now or I want to just do this. Let's do it with this example. So the 30 north uh, is going to be, so we're going to take 30 north, um, okay, now that's just nice and ugly here. Um, so I'm just going to stutter for a while, stutter, stutter. Okay, now usually the way these things work the top left corner is 90 north minus 180 west. They start at the same top left corner that a normal map does. Um, again, not necessarily the best decision, but it's the decision they've made. Now, it is going to be important here that for, for real maps, some of them don't cover the whole world. So they might only go from 60 north minus 180 west to you know, 60 south, 180 east. Um, but for this one, let's pretend this is data that represents the whole world. And the uh, the top right, uh, nope, let's not do that. The bottom right corner is going to be 90 south plus 180 east. So that's that's how this data is coming down. The very first byte is going to be representing, it turns out not quite 90 north minus 180 west, but essentially that. And the last byte, or at least in our case, the 450... Uh, 4.5 millionth byte or whatever will represent uh, 90 south plus 180 east. So knowing that, uh, and again, there's a there's a bugaboo that we're going to hit that explains why that's not actually true. Okay, so if the top left is 90 north, we're, to get to 30 north uh, and 40 north, we're going 50, 60 degrees, 50 to 60 degrees down, and to get from minus 120 west to minus 105 west, we're going, again, we start at minus 180, so this is going to go from 60 to 75 degrees. Uh, I'll call it right, but it's, of course, east of the minus 180 degrees where we started. Okay, so how do we convert this? Well, we know there's 0 0.12, 0 0.12 degrees per byte, so for the latitude, we divide by, we're going to divide by, um, yeah, by the way, I should point out that the 50 to 60 degrees is 90 minus 30 and 90 minus 40. And this is 180, actually, sorry, it's minus 120 minus minus 180. Um, and minus one, because we are going to need formulas for this eventually. Uh, minus 75, uh, minus, sorry, 105 minus minus 180. So that's how we got these numbers. Okay. So that is um, how many degrees over, but each byte only represents 0.12 of a degree. So let's see how we get to that. So 50 degrees down, uh, th there's going to be an issue here, but is going to be 50 over 0.12, which is, uh, oh good, this is 416.6666. It's not a whole number, and that's going to really be important because when we get a request for data, we won't necessarily be able to fill the exact request. Um, we might have to round stuff over, up and down. And if we do that, we have to let the end user know that we have not fulfilled their exact data request, but what, to give them the data that we are able to give them. Um, and 60 degrees over 0.12 is, and we're going to call this now, 416.6666 actually rounds up to 417, but we actually want to give the user more data than they requested. In other words, we, if we're going to clip, we're going to clip bigger than their square. We're not going to clip inside their square. So we're actually going to start with 416, and we're going to end with, I have no idea because I don't know how to divide, but fortunately I have a calculator here, with 500. So our latitude range 
is 416 to 500. Our longitude range, now 60 again, so this happens to be 500 to, and let me see what 75 is, hopefully it's 625. So we got lucky that there's only one sort of place we had to correct for decimals. But we now, to correct for decimals, we always give the user more than they wanted, which means we decrease the upper limit until it hits an integer and we increase the lower limit, sorry, we decrease the smaller of the two numbers and we increase the larger of the two numbers. Okay, so now we just go ahead and look in the file for, you know, 416 in the grid, 416 comma 500. Uh, actually, I'm going to say 500 comma 416 because latitude comes, longitude comes first. So we go over x 500 coordinates and we go down 416 coordinates. Again, um, we're looking at the grid as though it's top left uh, is, you know, it's the grid, the y, as you go down the y axis, the numbers actually are going to decrease. So it sort of looks like a normal grid. Um, but where are we going to find this coordinate 500, 416, plus a whole bunch of other ones we have to loop through to get? Well, because files are not really grids, um, we have to make a little bit of a convention here. And that is the way we're going to, the way most of this data comes is we say 3,000 longitude values um, from minus 180 to 180. So what that means is the first 3,000 bytes represent latitude, so we, the latitude is fixed at 90, sort of. We're going to correct that in a sec. The next 3,000 bytes represent, well, we know each time we go down in latitude, we're using 0.12 degrees, and that, so that's going to be 89, which is 90 minus 0 0.12. So that's the next value of latitude. The next 300,000 bytes, as you might expect, represent lat the next latitude down, which is uh, 89.76. Again, that's 90 minus 2 times 0 0.012. Um, so in order to create a function that, uh, in order to, to um, in order to get the right byte out of the file, uh, what we need to do is we need to, so the latitude value, so we basically have to convert this little pattern into a formula. And the way we do that, now we know the latitude, we, the way we do it is we take the latitude range, which I'll call lat r, because it's not really the latitude, multiply it by 3,000, and then we add lon. Again, these are the range numbers, and we'll call it, so we'll call it lon. So this basically says if the, um, if the latitude range was zero, uh, we'd have zero here plus lon r, and we would get the first 3,000 values. If lat r was one, meaning the latitude was 89.88, we would be looking at the second sort of row, even though the file doesn't have rows, and we would be looking at the, the values for latitude 89.88 and longitude again will be just from, um, you know, from 0 to 2999. And again, that's, that's a little bit off because we started our numbering at 0. And that's be because the file is, you know, the first byte, the file, is going to be byte, called byte 0, just by convention. And that means, obviously, for the first latitude line, we want this to be 0, so we don't waste the first 3,000 bytes of the file. So again, all of that... Um, is how it works. So now, let's build this all together. Um, amazingly, I've not lost anybody in chat for this. So now I'm going to build this all together and actually create a formula directly from degrees to the byte we're looking for. So here we go. I hope I do this right. So 90 minus lat over 0.12 times 3,000, which can be simplified. So what this part of this gives us is how many latitude values you have to go down, because 90, what, 90 you have to go down zero values, so you're fine. Uh, at minus 90, you have to go down 180 over 0.12, which is going to be the very last row, of course, uh, 1,500 row, which we, we did say we're going to have 1,500 rows uh, right up here. Um, it's actually row 1499, but don't let that worry you. Um, let's see. Oops. Okay. So, um, okay, so what we do with that is we divide it by 0.12 so we know which row of latitude we're on. And we multiply by 3,000 because 
in order to find the correct spot, we have to multiply the latitude range number, which is this, by 3000. Now we need to add the lo longitude number, but it's not exactly... So how do we know where the longitude is? Well, we add 180 to it, which means minus 180 becomes 0, and 180 becomes 360. And again, because each byte represents... Um, each byte represents a 0.12 degrees, we have to take uh, divide by 0.12 to see how many to see how many columns over we're going to find this longitude. Uh, this is all fine and dandy, but there's a problem with this, and that is uh, these numbers, when you divide by 0.12, there's no guarantee that the numbers are going to be integers. So again, we're going to be... Um, let's see. So... We could use math round, and that is actually not a bad idea, except we're gonna, it turns out we're not going to want to do that. And you have to round the number of 3,000 we don't round. You have to round the number of the sort of the row number uh, until it matches a one of your latitudes. And then you have to also round the or you know, Matt, I don't know who Matt is. Um, You have to round the number of columns as well. And so this should give you, roughly speaking, um, the value at a given latitude and longitude. So we can actually now... So let's go ahead and write a function for this. We're going to need to change it a little bit because it turns out uh, this function is not... Um, it, we we're gonna we want to actually sort of allow the user to decide whether to round down or up, because we do want to let uh, people take. Um, we do want to let people um, sort of increase the size of the square that's requested as opposed to decrease the size. So we do need to do that. But this is this is good. Um, okay. Uh, this is going to get really ugly unless I can figure out a way to... Oh, you know what? Uh, this is actually nice. Replit lets you do this sort of collapse function stuff. Uh, there is a way to include multiple functions. Uh, let me see if I... It, and it's not easy, unfortunately. Um, include self-written libraries in JS. In Node.js. And I'm going to pursue this for like two seconds. Um, okay. And it is not that easy, unfortunately. Getting started with... Right, note each one of the require, export, require, use to consume modules. And I don't know if this... Um, NPM modules can't, you will have to do it. You want to learn how to do that using exports. Okay. So, blah, blah, blah. Oh, my God. Okay. This is sort of ugly. Okay, I'm going to just try this because I, and I hate my life. Um, let's see if we can include it this way. Unfortunately, bclib is not written the correct way for this to work, but... Okay, I'm pretty sure that didn't actually work. I think we just, it just went way, way past what we, the, uh, the error message. So let's do this. Stop. I don't know why it's what it's doing when it's doing that. I'm suspicious. Um, so now let's see if I can actually call one of my wonderful functions. And I've got a lot of crappy functions in here. Convert string to template, apply function to hash values. Bound number is one of the simpler ones. It basically just, and I could have written this simpler than this, by the way. Um, it just basically... Uh, puts in between left and right 
uh, if it is outside that range. So it basically limits what n can be. And you can actually write this with min and max functions. I don't know why I didn't do that, but whatever. So now, console log. I wish I had a memory bound number. Bound number. So let's bound 5 between 4 and 6, which is not going to do anything, actually. Um, bound number is not defined. Okay, this, we might be able to do this. bclib bound number is not a function. Well, so apparently, even though I can do the, the, uh, the, the, the constant, it's not really a function. And there might be a way to export the whole thing as an export. Um, and that doesn't require a lot of changes. Um, so let's see. So module exports. Okay, this this is probably workable, but okay. I'm gonna say write your own Node.js, write your own library, because that's really what I'm doing. And this might be too fancy for me. Oh God. this might be something that's not worth pursuing. Uh, I'm going to use custom. Nope, that's to wait. Not what we want. I think maybe there is no easy way to do this. And that means I'm going to give up and just cut and paste my functions in there as necessary. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay, great. I did, oh, wow, did I actually? No, I did say no, but I think that was advice for something else. All right, screw it. We've wasted enough time on that. Uh, let's go back to index.js, and we're going to just c collapse any functions that I create, that I import from bclib. Uh, and we will just say, screw that. Okay, so now we want to write, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I hate having to put all this crap in here. Um, and I'm pretty sure JavaScript can't source other JavaScript. Uh, Node can't source other, uh, uh, let's see. Which is really easy. You can do script source very easily in um, very easily in uh, client side JavaScript. I don't think you can do it at all in Node.js. Um, hello world. Okay, and uh, this is if you want to use Node.js in the browser. I want to use Node.js as Node.js. Um, Let's see. Include JS file. There we go. It's not going to work, but but this might give us some. Uh, uh, let's see. Now, if this is correct, I should just be able to hack this. Oh, wow. I've got enough tabs to scroll. That's when you know you're awesome. Um, I should just be able to say, and this probably won't work. And then just basically at the very end of this, just put another bracket to say the whole thing is being exported. It won't work, though, uh, because it doesn't work. Okay, let's see if this still runs. Uh, am I 
line 20, it doesn't like line 20. Yeah, this is not easy. Oh yeah, apparently you have to uh, put commas and crap. This is not an easy translation. Um, booyah. This is the super ugly thing you want to do. And this is uh, eval is going to do what we want. Uh, we are, of course, terrible persons for using eval, and we also don't care. Um, let me make sure I didn't get rid of this. What is this balance? Nothing. Uh, okay, I'm going to risk that that brackets when I add it in. I can always re-upload it from... Okay, this is the eval way is the way I've done this before, and it is just hideous, and no one likes it, and I'm a bad person, and it's going to work. Let's see if that does work. I don't know if it actually needs that. Yeah, I don't know why they need to add that. Okay, so now... Oh, man. It's my... Uh, if this works, I'm going to also include bclib staging, which actually has m a lot of other stuff. So let's console log bound number... That's bound 4 between 5 and 6. Now, this should give us 5, because um, 4 is smaller than 5, so it's going to be bring it up to that. Um, all right, so that didn't work. Right, let's we can break this down a little bit. Let val equals read file sync, world's worst function. But in this case, it's actually okay, because we really do need to do this before we do, do anything else. Console log val. Let's see if that's actually what we want. It is not. We want FS that. Okay, so val is a buffer. Okay, now I think I see what the guy was saying. He's, he's saying that because it's a buffer, you need to convert it to a string. Uh, so let's do that. We probably could also just use stringify here. All right. So that's that's the the whole package there. Oh shit, I still have a module exports in there. That's what's wrong. And I'm tempted to just reload upload this whole thing. So maybe I was doing it right the first time. So now it's I didn't actually change anything. Um okay. So over here we just want to do an eval val. And if that works, I'm actually going to reduce it back to being one line, because this is not interesting JavaScript. This is sort of stupid JavaScript. Five, after I, of course, console logs, and they didn't need to console log. Let's try that again. Five, yay. I'm tempted to see if I could eval it when it was still just a buffer, not a string. No, I cannot. It does need to be a string. And so we're just going to do this terrible thing, which I should have remembered. It's a great trick. You should always never use it. Okay. And let's. And if this works, I'm going to go ahead and save this because this is. Yay! I'm going to go ahead and make a copy because I do forget to do that frequently. Okay, fantastic. Now I have no idea why that helped. Oh yes, I do have an idea why that helped. This means I can now write additional functions in bclib. Uh, BC lib staging, or actually I might create a third library for this particular project, but it means I don't have to clutter all my functions in here, and it also means I should be able to get rid of the var dump function. Uh, by, yeah, we don't really need that. Or that. Okay. And we don't need that either now. Okay.
So let's go ahead and make staging and what do we want to call this? Map functions, BC map funks. Oh, I'm really tempted to add it to BC lib staging, so let's actually do that because staging is, do you know, technically officially, um, isn't supposed to be for production stuff. So I can put some crap in there that is not. And by the way, all my all my users are gone, which is good, because I never liked them. Except you, Nico Duster, I loved you. Um, in, a, in a kinky way. Um, OK. So now we have all the functions we need from bclib and bclibjs. Uh, and let's go ahead and write in here. OK. Let's see. Actually, I think we need to make this function a little bit uglier because we don't know what the, the top latitude is going to be. It's not always going to be 90. So, and in theory, the west latitude is not always going to be 180, but uh, surprisingly, um, that happens. Usually it is minus 180, so usually the, the part, the, uh, the data is not truncated in longitude only in latitude, so that's not actually that important. Um, okay, so now let's see if we can convert some, uh, let's write a function to convert some latitudes and longitudes into uh, bytes inside of a file. And we will, we could do it just actually for the, um, for just one latitude longitude value, uh, but because we're going to be trying to be a little bit clever here, we can actually do it for a sort of a square of latitude longitude values. And actually, to be even more clever, we actually are going to be reading like um, several bytes from one quote unquote row, then from another row, then from another row. So we actually are going to be doing, uh, we don't really want to read one byte at a time. I don't know if it's inefficient because it's probably, you know, optimized somehow. But we really want to read, uh, uh, you know, several bytes, then move to the next row, which is 3,000 bytes down in this case, and then read a bunch of bytes from there. And, you know, in this case, I think we're reading uh, 125 bytes from there. So that's really what we want to do. And so let's see if we can get that all sort of into a nice function. Uh, and we are, of course, going to need, we're not going to assume that it's, you know, 30. We're not going to assume that this, the words file is always going to be what the way we want it. We're going to actually allow it to be something different. Um, so let's, a lot of this stuff, by the way, is... Uh, open street map stuff that we're not actually using right now. Um, but we will one day. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't do that. Okay, so let's... Um, given a latitude-longitude range and parameters about a given file, about a given file representing a representing a data set, because that's what we want. Um, for right now, we're just going to return the byte values, but later we probably won't actually return the data, which, which means, of course, we'll be returning a promise for the data because we can't actually uh, return the data because that's asynchronous. Return a turn the byte values at which the data is found. And I'm not going to tell you yet, it's a mystery. The problem here is we're not necessarily going to be able to give the user exactly the data he wants because our data might be formatted differently. It might not have the right alignment like we said earlier. So we do need to return to the user also um, what data we're actually giving him. Uh, and it's going to be different from the data he requested. And other reason to do that is we will allow asynchronous queries at some point, which means the user might be requesting three different sets of data. When we send it back to them, we want them to know what uh, what you know which which request we are fulfilling. Uh, there are many ways to do that. One way to do it is to simply have the response data. Uh, the requests are usually pretty short, so the response data will simply include the request, uh, and that way there will be no confusion. Okay. Let's go ahead and call this get data from file. Now I do things a little bit weirdly here. Instead of having parameters, which just gets ugly because no one remembers the order of the parameters, 
I require the user to send in an object that has what the parameters we want. And so, and I think I do this over here, input object parameters. So let's go to input object parameters. Um, and I think I just use the standard markdown style. No, I don't. I just put them in. Really? By the way, all the stuff is available uh, on my GitHub, so nothing here is secret. Okay, so the input object parameters, so we need the um, file name, the name of the file with the data, so that's like, in this case, it's going to be words.txt. Um, the top left, uh, let's see. Um, I'm going to just put that as a to-do. Allow for non-complete, incomplete latitude ranges. And by the way, another way to fix that is to actually take the file and buffer it in with the zeros or values that can't possibly represent data. And then, um, and then because I am using a compressed file system, that doesn't really add a lot of uh, length to the data, but it makes it look like you know 90 by whatever you want. Um, okay, apparently it's unhappy with me and saving. Okay, cool. And it decided it's going to reload which means we have to go back here. And I'm probably going to stream for another half hour and then die. I mean, literally die. Uh, and then I'll come back to life tomorrow. Okay. Um, let's see. I use LNG for longitude because L-O-N-G is a reserved keyword in some languages. And L-O-N, I just, for some reason, don't like it. I forgot why I didn't like it, but I don't. So I use LNG. And I try to maintain the order longitude, latitude, because longitude is like an x coordinate, latitude is like a y coordinate. Those are my personal conventions. Um, they don't necessarily apply to everybody else, uh, although they should. Okay. Now, what we want now in our case, we had 0.12 degrees data, uh, 0.12 degrees per byte in both latitude and longitude direction. That doesn't actually have to happen. We might actually have it where uh, the longitude and latitude resolution is different. Um, resolution and longitude. So this would be like 0.12 degrees for our example. Each byte represents how many degrees. And then the latitude, resolution in latitude. Um, uh, okay, and now we want, of course, this doesn't, this, right, all of this doesn't even tell us what the data they're requesting. So let's see if we can now, let's see. Um, <laughs> Northwest. See, do I want that? Yeah, I do want Northwest. Um, oh, you know, I could have it as an, sent as an array, but I actually want. Uh, okay. Okay, I need to this. I'm going to put it to do here. This is going to be ugly because we're going to ask them to send in the northwest latitude, the southeast latitude, which is actually north latitude. Um, um, and that just gets really ugly. Okay. Uh, and there should be a better way of doing this. And it might be we can even, at some point, you might even let them send in something like, uh, Uh, array of two arrays, because this is a lot cleaner than having to specify four different parameters. Again, that's not a huge deal. We can even write it maybe an alias function if we have to. Um, but again, we, we'll keep that as a note uh, to what we're doing here. Uh, but for right now, we're going to do it the ugly way. North latitude of the request. South latitude. of the request. And I'm sure you can guess what the other two will be. If there were anywhere else here, but there's not, so that's cool. Um, west longitude will be the west longitude of the request. And east longitude will be the east longitude of the request. And 
I really hate doing this, but it's just so much more convenient when you're dealing with maps. Uh, I'm going to say we're just dealing in degrees. That's not going to work well for us if we need to use um, trigono trigonometric trigonometric functions or anything like that. Um, but it do, it's going to work fine for us um, for this sort of thing because we're actually it's we're really reading off of a grid essentially. Um, at some point, this might come back to bite me, and I am aware that it might come back to bite me. Okay. Um, so now, what we want to do is figure out what bytes they're requesting, and we do have lat res, lon res. Okay. So this is this data here from lines 24 to 26 is actually about the map itself, and it would sort of be nice if we had a map object that actually kept track of this by itself. So instead of having to send in three parameters, you could just send in the map you were interested in. Again, that is something we might do later. Not a huge deal, though. Okay, so, so now what we want to do here is pretty much the same thing we did there, which is first we're going to determine, um, let's just call it the row. And the row is going to be 90 minus the object's north latitude divided by the object's latitudinal uh, latitude resolution. Okay. Um, now, here's where it gets interesting. Because this number may not be a, a, a whole number, uh, because we're dividing the lat res isn't you know the the request la latitude isn't necessarily a multiple of 90 minus the uh, isn't necessarily a multiple of the latitudinal resolution. So here's where we're going to put our little math floor function. Means we'll give you we'll give you more data than you want, and we actually need to sort of do something about that in a sec here. Column wise, oh actually I'm sorry. Um, because we're doing it with two different values, uh, row one, row start, row one. Yeah, so the starting row will be this. That's the north latitude. The ending row, because south is higher numbers than north in our example, will be pretty much the same thing. Now, if someone gives us like a south latitude that is higher than the north, even further north than the north latitude, we're going to return, end up returning nothing, but I'm not too worried about that for right now. We're, we're not going to do that check for right now. Now, in this case, uh, if we hit a, a row non-boundary, we want to give them the whole row. We want to give them to the end of that row. So in this case, we want to do, I don't know if math ceiling is a function. If it's not, we can do math floor plus one-ish, although that's slightly different. Okay, so those are, the, those are going to be the rows we want. The columns we want are going to be the, again, we're assuming here, minus 180, so we're going to say 180 plus longitude, and this number is going to necessarily be between um, 0 and 360, because the lowest longitude is minus 180. Also, we're not going to assume, uh, we're going to assume people aren't going to be sending us garbage values, like minus 200 longitude or something, which will still give them an answer, but it will give them an answer that has no meaning. Okay, and we need to divide that by the longitudinal resolution. Um, and of course, I meant we see if we can do here. One of the uglinesses you have to put obj dot in front of everything. So, so this is the west longitude over the object's longitudinal resolution. And call two is going to be very similar. Oh, nope, hang on. Huh, huh, huh. See, I forget. Math floor again. If they're going, we want to give them more than they want. So this is the lower number. So we'll give them the whole column if they need it. Okay. And we are going to test this. In fact, oops. Yeah, I'm just going to. So it's going to be 180 plus obj. Checked over east longitude over object longitude resolution. And then we're going to sealing that because, again, we want to go to the sort of. Uh, we want to give them the. Um, more data than they've requested. Now at this point, I'm going to do something um, 
really bad. Um, this is probably something you should not do, and I probably should not be doing it either. I'm going to actually alter the object they send it in and send it back. So the return value, wow. Wow. Um, okay, I forget what my convention is for return values. Uh, we're not going to return just an array, which we could, because that's what we want. Um, I'm going to actually change the actual, and uh, I'm going to be cheating here, the actual boundaries we are providing of the return data. Probably I, there's a JavaScript hell for me somewhere where I'm not supposed to do this. Okay. And then, of course, the um, bytes, an array of bytes, which is pretty much what we're sort of doing here. And this is, again, so I need to create this right now. We're just basically going to say i equals row 1, i less than or equal. Again, we're giving them the whole row 2, so it is, it is less than or equal to here. Actually, I think that's wrong, but whatever. Call one. J less than. And I want to test this before we go too much further, so I'm not going to necessarily. Um, okay, and now we just basically need to say. Um, Does this work in JavaScript? I don't think it does, but you know what? I don't care. Um, okay, so now we know the the rows and the columns, but we still don't know what the byte number is where we're going to get this. So if we know it's row i, column j, it's going to be i times, and this is where it gets ugly. Um, Because we know the resolution of the longitude, that will actually let us determine the um, how many r columns of longitude we have, and it's going to be this. It's going to be 360 divided by the object's longitudinal resolution. And for example, when we had a longitudinal resolution of 0.12, that was 3,000 bytes per um, uh, per line of latitude for each of the longitude stuff. So let me make sure I've got this correct, though. Um, let's see. So row 1 represents... Re so these are latitudes. So we multiply the latitude, or the row number for the latitude, by how many longitudes we have in each row, plus j. And again, I'm going to totally totally probably biff this. And then we want to return object. So now, let's see if this still runs. It might not. It has to do this magic. I don't know why. This is sort of... Um, yeah, you can't do that. Is there a push? There, there's a way. There's a clever way to do this that doesn't require you actually numbering your. Uh, although we could. I mean, we we're, we're not. Uh, it's not. A, we we know how, you know what row and one and column two and all this stuff is. So we could do it. It's not. It's not a huge deal. Um, but let me see. No JS add to array, and I think there's like a push or something that you can do. Array how to add items or this is actually would be working in regular JavaScript too. Yeah, so apparently this would work in J node. Um, yeah, it is push. So let's use that. Now again, what the hell did I do? Oh, God, did, did I do it again? I did do it again. Okay. We'll get back here, though. Yeah, and the little uh, bracket bracket doesn't work in, for some reason in, in node because it has to be different. So let's go back to BC. Oh, we're actually putting this in staging. 
Okay. Now, unfortunately, this might be array.push instead of this because JavaScript is that's just effing weird. Blah, blah, blah. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and save this even though I don't think we've done anything interesting. All right, so back here in the index file, um, Okay, and by the way, notice that since I'm only returning bytes, we don't actually need to give it the file name. I mean, it, it wants it, but we're not, it's not going to use it. So let's see if we can test it all the way up here. Console log. Um, get. Oh man, this is not going to do it for my own. Sometimes you can get it to do it so that. Uh, so that it can com do completion on your own stuff. Not today, though. And we're going to send it a nice... Um, let's go ahead and put this in separate line. We'll send it a nice object. Um, actually, let me do this. Get data from file. I'm going to put the object on its own sort of uh, line to make things clearer or more confusing, whatever. Okay, suppose I want to get data from... Uh, I don't know, let's say... So I will put these in the order of 30 to 40. Actually, I think this is exactly the same thing we did before. Um, in fact, why don't we go ahead and uh, do what we did in the README, which I think was minus 120 to minus 105. And then we want um, lat res was 0.12, and the same as long res was also 0.12. Boy, let's see what this does. No idea. Well, that was pretty cool, kind of. I have no idea if that's right or wrong, so that's not actually useful. Although, one thing we will notice here is these numbers better not be consecutive, because we do need to jump at some point to the next... Um, well, that's not good. Well, actually, because we might not have enough. Yeah. This range is too big, actually, because... So let's do uh, from, like, 30 to 31, and minus 120 to minus... We can use fractions, 118.5. And that should give us a fewer number of data points. So let's do that. And I think, hopefully, we're seeing the jumping effect here. Um... So I'm requesting about, uh, let's see, 1.5 degrees over 0.12. I'm requesting about 11 or, yeah, and there we go. <sighs> yeah, God, I hate that. And uh, you can see, however, here, um, after we go to this number, which I shouldn't have done because it's going to do that again, but after we go to 1473513, we get a different number here. We'll jump quite a bit because we only want some of the latitude values in there. Now, one thing we didn't do that I said we were going to do is change these numbers to reflect the data we actually are giving back. Uh, and that is not a hard thing to do. The formula is actually quite easily reversible. Uh, I didn't want to do that because I wanted to run some tests first. So now, we don't have to do this after the for loop, but we will. So now the south latitude here, we just now need to convert row... Uh, I'll do north latitude first. We just need to convert row 1 back into a latitude. So we know what row 1 is. Um, and here's where it gets, here's where we're going to do something that's really, really ugly. So we know that each row represents point, uh, sorry, obj lat res worth of latitude. So this tells us how much uh, latitude is, you know, what the total amount is. And you would think it's going to be 90 minus that. Uh, because every row, so if it's row 1, you know, if row 1 happens to be equal to 0, that's 90 degrees, and so on down the line. But it's not. Because if um, each cell represents, you know, 0 0.112, or lat res, the actual latitude in the center of the cell is not going to be like 90. It's going to be 90 minus 1 half of 0.12. Because we're looking 
we assume the data points are in the center of the cell, not at the top left corner. And what we've been computing so far is the top left corner. Um, and I think that shouldn't cause a problem because we are, um, because actually that might be causing a problem. Well, we'll, we'll see. Um, uh, we are, I think the seal in the floor will save us here. Uh, but we are actually, you know, using the top left, uh, we're using the, uh, the top left corners instead of using the middle of the cell, which we should be doing. We might need to fix that, actually. I have to look into that. Okay. So what this is actually going to be is 90 minus rho plus 0.5. So, and it's always going to be one half. It's so if row one were, hmm, that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant at all. Sorry. Okay. So row one, this tells us how much, uh, but we have to add up. So it's going to be ninety minus this. So we actually want row 1 plus 0.5. That represents the middle of that cell. And actually, I should probably correct my other formula uh, to, uh, to actually use this. And we might even want to make these formulas uh, into a function. But it's not really that hard. But OK, so here, if we actually row 1 was 0, it would actually represent, we're actually going to be looking at 90 minus a little tiny bit, because we're, we're not looking at the top left corner. Um, And I'm getting more and more scared of doing it this way. Um, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to return these as M, meaning modified, meaning this is what we actually give you. And that way we can look at the original request and see how we've changed it. So that's modified north latitude, modified south latitude, modified west longitude, modified east longitude. And of course, we need to fix this. This is going to be row two. And this is going to be 180 plus call one. And we're going to be using the longitude, oh, not called one, longitudinal resolution here. And here we're going to be using 180 also plus call two and the longitudinal resolution. So if this works, we can now actually have sort of an indication of what's actually being returned to us. Uh, plus a bunch of bytes we don't... Okay, so MLAT... Back to index, yes. Um, we requested a north latitude of 31. It gave us 31.02 because 31 degrees is not a perfect multiple of 0.12 in any form or direction. Um, the south latitude it gave us a 29.94 below what we requested because again we we, uh, uh, we are something um, because we are not able to give a resolution that high of exactly 30 degrees uh, this is all screwed up so I think I've I made a mistake in signing somewhere so let's see to convert this back I think it's actually minus 180 plus this which could also be written as uh, as uh, the whole thing minus 180, that those are equivalent. Okay, and now let's see if that's any closer to what we actually wanted. And minus 119.94. So this is problematic. We requested minus 120, and it gave us to the east of that. We don't want that. We want it to be to the west of that. So, so here, this is, this calculation is incorrect. It actually has to be the floor of this number minus 0.5. And that should put us within range. And here it has to be plus 0 0.5. And this is getting ugly enough that I wanted that I should have done it with a function. And again, the column one we will subtract 0.5, so we definitely get the uh, we get the left or left portion of this. Because that these are the actual conversions. Uh, the is not to the top left corner, but to the middle of the cell. And if this works, 
And now we see that our, uh, you know, our northwest longitude, is, or sorry, our west longitude is beyond minus 120 what the way we wanted it to be. Um, and the east longitude is, again, east of minus 118. So we're giving the user more data than they are requesting, which is, which is good. Um, now, I'm going to stop here in just a second, but let's do this. Um, well, let's do that. Um, let's see if the amount of data we're getting back is actually what we expect. So if we made this like this, we would expect one chunk of latitude data. And if we made this, let's say, I'm trying to do math in my head, which is not great at, 88, 76. So here we would actually expect to see like one value of latitude and maybe three values of longitude, it's two values of longitude because we are going one by two. See what this does? Okay, so not too many bytes. This is good. This is good. Um, the next thing we'll need to do, and we're not going to do it today, uh, and again, the north latitude here is is good, 30.18. South latitude is 29.82. Um, and the floating point errors suck, but we can deal with them. So now we'll need to make sure that the user can interpret, and of course, we we'll actually want to return data, not just the byte number. The user can interpret which element of the array represents which longitude and latitude, which hopefully we are giving them from MN uh, from these values here. Um, we could, in theory, attach a latitude and longitude to each value. That would be painful because we actually don't want to uh, we don't want to return that much data. We want to return a smaller quantity of data than that. Um, so I think uh, I think we're in the stream there, and next time I'll probably do something totally different just to f with you. But if not, we will continue with uh, with this and see if we can use it to get data. And uh, we can actually, there's actually some, I have a real data file that I might be able to use that, uh, that is, gives us a land cover usage, uh, which is actually sort of interesting. And we might even be able to create a map out of it using the canvas function, uh, or leaflet, which is, is a different kind of canvas. And we might be able to overlay that on open street maps. And we might be able to fly to the frickin' moon. I don't know. But for right now, saying goodbye.